Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry I've been gone for quite a while, lots been going on. I will mention that in the video if you do care, but getting straight into it. Today we are covering equipment to protect your commander because of course, your commander is the key part of your deck, whether you just love your commander, you're trying to win on commander damage, or it's part of your combos and strategies. You need to use protection, kids. Take it for what you will, could mean other things, so be it. So the two big ones everyone knows are Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots. Your pair of booties, both two mana, often competing for the same slot or run them both. Pros and cons to each. Greaves, only two mana, equip cost is zero. Nice and cheap, move it around the board to protect key things. Only downside is, gives you shroud. Gives you haste, which is nice too, but the shroud. If you play a deck where you need to target your own creatures with abilities or equipment or auras or whatever, can work against you. You need another target to get it off. So definitely worth considering that. Where the swift foot boots here, Hexproof instead of Shroud. Still got haste, but you got a quick cost of one. Great if you do want to maybe do a Voltron playstyle, load up a ton of key pieces onto one creature. But these are the well-known, established, everyone runs them. Now, if you want to go the indestructible way to protect your commander, you can run the hammer. I think more people need to run the hammer here. It's four mana to play, four to equip, but when the hammer or another equipment enters the battlefield, just attach it straight onto a creature you control, and it gives that creature two zero and indestructible. It doesn't have to pay its own equip cost, and it makes other equipment you play later on free. If you're in a slightly equipment heavy deck, run it no-brainer. Um, hell, I run it in just a lot of my decks that aren't even equipment them based, because you can just drop it in, free equip, for four mana you've made that creature indestructible and buffed up. But its main competition is Dark Steel Plate. Free to play, two to equip, but it just gives a creature indestructible. But, nice thing is the plate itself is indestructible, which can come in handy, especially with artifact removal or equipment targeting. Um, but you don't get that little bit of a power buff. I like them both, they're great. I think the hammer is better in a more aggressive playstyle, the fact for four mana, it's on the board, power buff, and it's ready to go. But if you know you play a group and your friends love to destroy your shit, Dark Steel Plate. And some other ones that are a little bit lesser played now. General's Kabuto from Kamigawa, doesn't see much play because not many people know about it, but four to play, two to equip, gives your creature shroud, and it prevents all combat damage to be dealt to it. Great if you're in a more aggressive playstyle, maybe you're a red-green commander and you just love throwing your commander in there and just seeing what you can hit. Um, yeah, it kind of helps you with less than favorable combat. You got Champion's Helm, which is getting up there in price now, nearly $30, but a great piece of equipment. It is three mana to play, one to equip, gives a creature 2-2, two, two, that's nice. But if it's legendary, it gets hexproof. Hexproof, not shroud. So once it's on the board, it's only one to keep moving around onto the other legendary creatures. So obviously for your commander, but if you're running maybe Sissa and you've got a lot of other legendary creatures that you want to protect, or maybe a Lord deck where you, or tribal, you got lots of lords to protect, great option there. Mask of Avacyn's a bit of a bastard child of all these. Two to play, three to equip. That equip cost is rough. I'd rather have a high initial cost and a low equip cost later on, but three to equip is getting up there. Gives the creature a little bit of power and defense buff, one, two, and hexproof, which is good. But it's mainly that equipped cost three, which kind of puts me off. Or if you want to do a bit of a flavor build, gray and angel decks for sure. If you're a commander that cares about sneaking through some combat damage, the cloak is for you. Uh, Whisper Silk Cloak, three to play, two to equip, but it gives the creature unblockable and shroud. So again, if you're playing a deck where you have to target your own creatures, probably not the best idea, but the unblockable aspect is a big win, especially with a equipped cost of two. So maybe you're like um, an infect commander or you're going for commander damage, maybe a Voltron style. Once you've got all the pieces onto it, play the cloak and away you go. Still sees a lot of play. It's about a $2-$3 equipment piece. Helm of the Host. Remember kids, redundancy is a form of protection. Having multiple copies of your own commander protects you from single target removal. Yes, board wipes are still going to get you, but they can't path to exile five copies of the one commander now, can they? Great option. A lot of commanders do get kind of broken when you have more than one copy because legend rules a thing. They're not intended to be in that situation. For example, Cranko Mob Boss, you're gonna cry. If you're trying to do a bit of color protection, Commander's Plate from the new Commander Legends is just an OP boss piece of equipment. One to play, five to equip, but three to equip if it's a new Commander, which is a little bit on the high side, like the Mask of Avacyn, but the up is real up. You get three three on the creature, and it has pro each color that it's not in your color identity. That's pretty big. You're maybe mono green, you have pro anything not green. Huge. Um, plus, 3-3 three, three is quite a good buff. It makes most commanders going to survive pretty much any combat situation, except for Death Touch. A more budget-friendly option would be Sanctuary Blade. 
two to play, three to equip, only 20 odd cents to buy, but different use case, I would say. When it becomes attached to a creature, you pick a color, you pro that color, and the creature gets 2-0 in addition. Way better in 1v1s, not as great in multiplayer games where you've got other threats to deal with. Um, plus, you've got to keep paying that 3 if you want to change the color. So you've got to pay 3 to re-equip it somewhere to give that new creature pro a color. Commander's Plate is far better if you can run it. Another option are your Swords of X and Y. Very powerful, great secondary treasury effects like untapping your lands, lightning bolt, making tokens, mill, whatever. But as a primary effect, they give all your, well, equip creatures, sorry, plus two, plus two, and pro two colors that are on the sword. Not the best, almost friendly play style when you run these because you are probably putting them in your deck to fight a particular player, but your safe bet would be going anything pro blue, black, or white, because that's where most of your removal or target removal is going to come from. But they are powerful, you can run them, but they are getting pretty expensive. Okay, any equipment that I've missed that you could run to protect your commander? I've tried to go with equipment that could see play in any commander deck, most use cases, just to give you that little bit extra protection so you don't lose your commander. Um, yeah, like I said guys, just a really easy one to get me back into it. I've been very busy with work, my house is getting near done so that's a real stressful point in the building phase. Um, I just had to deal with a new car which, yeah, great getting a new car, I'm excited for that of course, but banks and dealers, what a stressful situation they can put you in. Um, just kind of trying to juggle all at once. So I'm sorry I kind of went off the radar there for a little bit, but I'll try to get back into my videos and make more meaty content. Uh, thank you for sticking around guys and have a good one. Catch you later. See ya. If you enjoyed that video or if you've got any other suggestions, let us know down below guys. Give the video a like, helps out the channel a lot and please consider subbing. To my patrons, you guys are the bomb. I cannot thank you guys enough. Marcus is always our number one meaty patron here, always doing the work. Um, if you guys have any video topics you want me to cover, always just contact me on Patreon and let me know.